Hey, it's Alex Williams, the new stack here with the folks from Bitnami and Code Envy. Hey guys, how are you? Hi, hey, Alex. Hi, Alex. Awesome. So let's make a few introductions and then we'll then we'll go from there. David. Yeah, hi, I'm David Dennis. I'm the VP of Marketing at Bitnami. And I'm Rick, I'm the VP of Engineering at Bitnami. I'm Tyler, I'm project lead for Eclipse Che and I run a company called Code Envy. Awesome. So what we're looking at today is how we're seeing this combination with Eclipse Che and Bitnami. Is that right, guys? Yeah, we'll show you how to the develop get your development environment set up super quick and also get a CI pipeline set up with just a few button clicks. And and what what I'm told at least is that what we're seeing here really is, you know, the ability to put together a, a DevOps tool set in many ways that is both portable, has some ease ease of mm -hmm. ease of use and you know it allows for some level of security. Yeah, that's right. So uh, a lot of the elements that you would need to build a DevOps tool chain are actually already represented in the Bitnami catalog. So, you know, Rick mentioned, you know, Jenkins, we have it there as a, as a CI tool. We have GitLab as a repository. We have Redmine if you want to use that for project and bug tracking, as well as alternatives to all the guys I just mentioned, you know, are already in the Bitnami catalog. And those are also represented in all of the cloud vendors where you can also find the Bitnami catalog. So when you combine that with Eclipse J, which gets you started to doing the actual development work, then if you have those pieces spun up inside of Bitnami, then you can push it out to the rest of the DevOps chain like you, like you would normally, except in this case, it's all done in the cloud and it's spun up really easily and thus becomes much more portable and much more accessible to multiple people. Great, so let's do a demo. All right, cool. So I'm going to drive the demo. Just give me a sec here. So we are at the bitnami.com forward slash Docker page. And from here, you can see that we have created a set of what we call development containers. And these are containers that are all set up to get you started developing in different frameworks super quickly. I'll show you how easy it is to get started. We have seven of them right now. We have more on the way. Um, we're making these all the time. And one of the fastest ways to get started with these is by using something that's called an on-demand workspace. You can come here to get our GitHub repo and look at all our code, look at how it's all done. The really neat thing is you can click this button right here. This is developer workspace. When I click this button, what's going to do is it's going to take me to the code envy website and it's going to load all that code in here. So just need to give it a sec to set up. And before you know it, I'm going to have an express website running like hosted in code envy. So right from the start, you guys are making a real big effort to basically automate these processes. Historically, I imagine that this is a process that takes the developer some time to put together themselves. Right. Could you together. imagine like trying to get Express set up? What packages do you need? What, what are you trying to install things that conflict with what's right. already on your computer? And look, it's already, it's building the sample code right now. In the time that we're talking, I have an IDE running Express code. The, you know, it comes back to that, you know, long time issue of it works on his machine, but it doesn't work on mine. Mm -hmm. And the process that developers go through are, you know, hey, I got to get myself a runtime and Docker's been great for that. So let me get a container or mm -hmm. compose that. But then, you know, hey, wait a minute. Now I need to get the right framework. So uh, do I have the right version of that framework? Is it set up the right way? Uh, how do I get my code into that? But then I got to deal with repo, getting cloned, setting up my SSH keys. Um, I might need to do OAuth access. And then I have to wire up my IDE as well. So that's just to start hacking on code, and that process is consistent and repeatable, and, and we just focus on automating that process with Che. So, so Alex, uh, to that point, last time I was at DockerCon, I basically kind of asked people, hey, how long does it take you to set up a development environment? And most of the guys who came to our booth, and again, this is a DockerCon, so you know, they probably have a high level of skill. They said it took them about two days on average to get everything all hooked up. Wow. Yeah. 
So this is laughably easy compared to that. So that feature I just showed you is the on-demand workspace. So that can take you from your GitHub repo, click a button, and you're developing on um, uh, Shea uh, hosted at uh, Code Envy. But there's another direction that you can go also, which might be important to some of your users, which I show here. So here I've run Shea from one of my favorite cloud providers, and I just launched Shea. Um, it's packaged by Bitnami, so you can just press a button and run it. And it's empty right now, uh, but then you can just run a stack. So of course, I'm gonna go to the stack library, because that's where you're gonna find all those same Bitnami stacks are right here ready to go. And so I can do the same thing from this direction. Um, and I'll have, you know, essentially the same experience, but this is Shea hosted you know, in my spot of choice. Okay, okay. Um, so what I want to show over here, though, is Shea and the Bitnami stacks in the context of a CI pipeline. I actually already have one set up that you can see running here. I have a Jenkins set up, I have a GitLab set up, and I have Shea set up. Um, and you can see those are like three resources that are running here on Azure. This will, this will, we have the same thing will work on other clouds, of course, Amazon or Google. Um, we have them all packaged here. So I have all these running right now, but I just wanted to show quickly how easy it is actually to, to get them running. I think I'll just show uh, Get Jenkins running, because I think that's um, probably the most interesting, because I don't know, you know, you see people at bars on Friday nights or poor broken souls and you ask them what's wrong and they're like, I spent the week trying to get Jenkins set up, you know? And so here, let me show you how easy it is. For, for many people, Jenkins is the center of their CI pipeline. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm just saying that I want a new resource. I'm just gonna search for Bitnami Jenkins. And this is on Azure, but this could also be on any other cloud, right? Absolutely. Like we run it, we run on Google, Amazon, this whole thing, the, the whole um, Shea, Jenkins, uh, GitLab, our, our, our whole library is on all those clouds. So the same thing can be done anywhere. Now, what about if you're, you know, you're running this on your own infrastructure then too? Well, you know, the great thing is, is that all these services are packaged up as Docker containers themselves. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the default way to start Che is Docker run Che. So, you know, our only dependency is Docker on your laptop or some other server that you're hosting on your infrastructure. You get it there, uh, you can launch these containers and the experience is identical to what uh, Rick is showing here. Yeah, exactly. And so for, and for all the components that you might want, um, Besides Shea, we actually have installers that you can download and install them like on a laptop if you want, but you can also install them on your local cloud. This is like this never ending list of Bitnami assets <laughs> that you can find here it has everything that you're that you would ever need and you can run it from a public cloud. You can run it locally. You can run it from a private cloud. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to Jenkins though, because I am just okay. like, Super excited about how cool this is. So you notice there's two Jenkins here. There's one that's called Jenkins and one that's called Production Jenkins. Uh -huh. The difference is that Production Jenkins creates a master-slave relationship for you. And so, like, um, I'm just going to go through, click the buttons to get it started. Um, uh, and here you can see, here's where it's actually really cool. So, um, I can, you know, create a password here. Maybe I'll accept it. I didn't like that password. Let me. Okay, so now I have a good password in there. But look here, I can drop down and just say how many machines I want. And it'll create a master node and it'll create uh, slave nodes for me. And you can see like how high I can scale it up or down. I can scale it up or down when it's in production. Again, um, that, that speaks to then the the easy kind of setup. Yeah, it's crazy easy. I mean, like if you compare to trying to get Jenkins to run yourself, this is like just insanely <laughs> easy. I mean, it's like hard to describe. It's literally a matter of minutes. Like we've taken like a week work of a week's worth of expertise and pain and suffering and just, you know, 
um, made it a few button clicks. So why don't I show you everything together over here. So here is actually, I have a CI pipeline set up. Of course, um, as a developer, the center of it's gonna be my IDE. I kind of expanded it a little bit so that your viewers can see the, the fonts a little better. Mm -hmm. So it's a little compressed just so they can read it. So this is like just express boilerplate code that I, that I, that, um, our uh, containers, our express container generates for you automatically. And you can see here uh, that Shea gives you like a URL where you can go look at and see the sample application that is created. So this is like very normal. This is like when a developer feels like, okay, finally, I'm developing now. Like I can see the output and I can start changing the output. Um, but then, of course, you need a place to put your code, and this shows GitLab. This shows here I've made a project called My Express Code Base, and there's one commit to it. So so far, I've made I've pushed one commit, which was the, just the generated code. And then, of course, you want Jenkins to keep an eye on that and make sure it's all building. So I made a Jenkins progress project also to go with it. I don't want to bore your viewers with like filling in all the boxes and everything. Right. right. So, but I can show them here, like it says express, and then I can just write a little code. Like, I think like pretty much every developer does the same thing. The first thing they do is try to change a visible string. So it shows that they have control of the system. So I'm going to change this to. Hypnose. So what do you find is like, is using these, who are the ones you, who expect to be using these tools? Like who are the types of folks? I mean, and tell us about you know, the profile, kind of the people who you're thinking of or like, who would see this is really viable. Well, you know, so, so when it comes to exploring the frameworks, it's developers of any ilk, right? Whether right. you're a beginner or an expert that just needs to get familiar with that framework, this is quick, go for that. Um, but, you know, once you um, move up to a development team uh, and you're on a development project together, uh, you know, you, what you really want to do is you want to set up your delivery pipeline as quickly as possible. So if Jenkins is your best practice and you want to have your um, uh, version control and an integrated uh, web IDE, you're, you're looking to set it up with as few clicks as possible. And so this, you know, it elevates that to the team lead status or maybe the DevOps professional who's responsible for that. Mm -hmm. So um, Alex, one kind of additional comment to that. So uh, Lawrence Heck, you know, the, he's you know, one of your writers took some of the Bitnami survey data where we asked people how many people were using um, CI tools and about half of them basically said they weren't or, or they had one that was cobbled together. So this kind of gets back to the point that we've been making before. A lot of people, <clears throat> they want to start doing DevOps or do DevOps better, but I think a lot of them, because of the fact that the tools necess aren't necessarily the easiest to set up in the world, they've been held back. So anybody who's out there who thinks that, wow, I, I really, I really want to do agile software development. I really want to do DevOps, but I've, I've never got all the linkages in the chain put together. It just seemed too hard and, you know, a big mountain of a task. We're going to be making this a lot easier from end to end with everything you've seen here, with the code envy part, with the Jenkins part, with the lab part. It's all those people. Yeah, that's the story right there. I mean, you know, without, without that, it becomes more of a exercise in let's try this or let's try that. You know, how do we, how do we get these different tool sets to work together? How do we get these platforms to work? And then I, then it seems to me then, then the, uh, the added uh, benefit then is the portability, right? And then be able to use it on multiple clouds and, and the big issue that all uh, enterprises face and that's security. And then that's where the bit. Well, I think that, you know, it, 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 this will be the first time that you can do all your development in the cloud, not portions of it. Right. And so I think that, you know, just having version control in the cloud or just having your CI in the cloud, you know, it doesn't solve these problems around collaboration, um, uh, resource management, developer onboarding, team management and security. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and, and once all your services and that entire workflow is consistent, reproducible, auditable, in a central place, then suddenly, you know, productivity is really going to go through the roof on that. Excellent. We see, you know, these new integrated environments and these new ways of kind of thinking about, you know, development in the cloud is that we don't have a scale out of use cases quite yet because it is so new. And so sometimes it's hard to tell what's an outlier and what's not. Are you guys starting to see any patterns? 
Well, uh, you know, from my point of view, we, we're certainly seeing patterns. Uh, there, there are usage patterns, and then there are uh, certainly buying patterns that we've seen. On the on the buying patterns front, uh, there are uh, a lot of a lot of technical team leads that have who themselves are the mo most senior person on the team, and they've fallen into a support role uh, with having to do a lot of configuration and. and mm -hmm and support and so they see cloud development as a way for them to define templates or stacks and then offload that support to the team itself uh, that's a very popular use case uh, we started to see ctos and cios uh, drive cloud development initiatives to just say hey you know, we're moving everything off the desktop entirely into the cloud because we know that cloud workflows are more productive for us so these are now an imperative for us um, in the larger organizations that have a lot of regulatory uh, concerns uh, that are controlled environments. Uh, you know, the things that come to the table are um, the, the friction between IT and developers over who controls root access. Um, but that's been a long-standing battle. And, and Docker and hosted environments allows IT to control the underlying substrate mm -hmm. while the developer gets root access inside the container. So it solves that problem. Uh, but they also tend to have uh, really highly regulated environments that require a huge amount of setup tasks with a lot of distributed contractors that are rotating through. So anytime you have that scenario, this is a developer bootstrapping uh, team onboarding scenario that is super popular for them. Uh, other scenarios, uh, it's very popular in education. Teachers love to set it up for their class. They offer um, instruction and in, in, um, tutorials on that. And, and then probably the biggest use case of all right now is uh, other products who are embedding uh, this cloud development workflows into their own product to mm. enhance that. Um, you know, so that's how SAP and, and Red Hat and S, uh, Samsung uh, and a variety of other companies have gotten involved because they're thinking about how to you know, build out their own workflows for this stuff. Well, guys, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk and to show us how, you know, this integration with Benami and Eclipse J and look forward to following the developments and seeing where it goes. Yeah, thank Thanks you, Alan. So it was a blast. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.